Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we've got another AMD based computer to take a look at today. This one is another ThinkPad. This is the ThinkPad X13 Gen 1 and this has a 13.3 inch display along with the newest Ryzen processors. This one has a Ryzen 5 4650U. We're going to be taking a closer look at this laptop and what it can do in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this, it goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, nor is anyone reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this is going to vary quite a bit depending on your configuration. Uh, this one probably comes in around $1,200 or $1,300, give or take. The entry-level one starts at around $700 with a very minimal configuration. I think the reality here is that you'll be spending about $1,000 to $1,200 to get a decent configuration. That will cost more than you might see some other AMD-based laptops costing, but when you buy a ThinkPad, you're buying the materials, you're buying the thin and light nature of the devices, and that is what you're paying for. If you want this performance at a lower price, you can find it. It's just going to be with a laptop that's bigger, heavier, and maybe a little more clunky. But this one feels pretty nice and sleek, even though its bezels are looking a bit outdated to me. Uh, our unit here came with a 13.3 inch 1080p touch display. You have the option for a non-touch version as well, also at 1080p. That will uh, obviously impact the price depending on which one you choose. Uh, the brightness on both the touch and non-touch versions is 300 nits, so not too bad on the brightness front here. Uh, there's also a brighter display at 500 nits that has privacy guard that will drop off the display for people sitting next to you on an airplane, for example. Uh, that one is the more top-of-the-line display. And then on the entry level, they have a 1366 by 768 display that's running at 250 nits, but I would say go with the 1080p display if you can. Uh, what's nice for a touch display here is that it's not all that glossy, so it's a nice anti-glare screen, and it looks pretty good here as most of these Lenovo devices do. This unit has eight gigabytes of RAM installed. Unfortunately, the RAM is not upgradable, so you are, are gonna be stuck with what you buy. Uh, so I would suggest probably going with the 16 gig model if you can. The good news is, is that they are configuring this in dual channel mode, so they will all make use of the AMD processor to its fullest extent, uh, given the RAM configuration they chose, but unfortunately you can't upgrade it. Uh, this one has a 256 gigabyte solid state drive on board. I do believe you can upgrade that if you wish. It's an NVMe. Uh, the weight on the unit they sent us is just shy of three pounds, two pounds, 15 ounces. That's about 1.3 kilograms. It looks like the starting model is a little bit lighter at 2.2 pounds or 1.28 kilograms, but it still feels nice and solid. The material is very nice on this. It's a magnesium uh, casing, which has some glass fiber components as well. It feels really premium and it feels pretty sturdy as well. And because it's a ThinkPad, you get the recognizable keyboard here with super deep travel on the keys. It is backlit. You have the little nub here for navigating with your finger if you don't want to use the trackpad. Uh, you have two buttons here that you can use even with the trackpad if you choose. And of course, the trackpad is a click pad too. So you have a lot of different options for input on this. You also have a fingerprint sensor here as well. Now there's a bunch of ports on here worth talking about. So let's have a look at those. You've got two USB-C ports, one here and one here. These are full service ports, which means that you can not only uh, connect power to those two USB-C ports, but you can also output video and connect your data devices to it. So that was good to see there. Uh, this little port here is the ThinkPad proprietary network adapter. So you could get a gigabit ethernet wired in without giving up one of your ports. Next to it, it looks like you've got a USB 3.0 port right here. HDMI out for video. You've got a headphone microphone jack there. And then on the other side, we have the fan exhaust along with another USB 3 port and a Kensington lock. Now, one thing to note on this one versus the Intel is that if you went with the Intel version, you would get a Thunderbolt port there on the side, which would give you the option to use an external GPU if you wanted to for better graphics performance when you're docked. Uh, this one won't support that. But that's really only the big difference here between the AMD one versus the Intel one. 
beyond their performance. Now the webcam is here at the top and they've got a shutter system built into it so you don't have to put a piece of tape over your camera to block the lens. Just flick the little switch over here and it will protect your privacy. The webcam is 720p, nothing spectacular, but it's good enough for Zoom calls and that sort of thing, so it should be okay for that. But of course, a higher resolution camera will always look better if you want to connect one via USB. The speakers are here on the bottom on the left and right hand side of the laptop. Because they are downward firing, the quality of the audio will vary based on the surface your laptop is sitting on. Uh, so I found the sound to be okay on it, nothing spectacular. Uh, good stereo separation though and very loud, so I think it'll be good for web conferences and that sort of thing, but for music you might want to attach up some headphones. The display here goes all the way down flat. Uh, this is about as far as it goes, but there is a yoga version available of this, which is more of a tablet two-in-one. This one is just the laptop, but you should be able to find a good display position. Unfortunately, the bottom here will kick up when you move the display around, so you'll have to hold it down when you get that display adjusted to where you want it. Now the battery life on this one, we estimate to be about eight to nine hours if you're doing the basics like web browsing, word processing, email, and that sort of thing. If you do uh, some more intensive applications like gaming or video editing, that of course will impact the battery more significantly. I would recommend keeping the display brightness down a bit as well to get more life out of it. Uh, but all in, if you are doing the work tasks that a lot of people do with these laptops, you should be able to get through most of the workday, if not all of it, without having to charge the laptop. It does support rapid charging through the USB-C port here, so you will be able to fill up the tank uh, pretty quick on it if you do run a little low during the day. But altogether, not bad for a 13-inch laptop. All right, let's take a look now and see how this performs. We'll begin with the basics, some web browsing. We'll load up the Chrome browser here. As you can see, it snaps up there pretty quickly. We'll visit the nasa.gov homepage and browse around a little bit. Uh, this is on my AC wireless network right now, but this does support the new Wi-Fi 6 standard. Uh, but all in, I don't see any performance issues to concern me. I think it's going to be a very nice browsing experience. Uh, we also tested out some video a little bit earlier. We did my YouTube channel running at 1080p at 60 frames per second. Uh, no drop frames with this. It was all running uh, just perfectly here on YouTube. So I don't think you'll have any problems doing YouTube or Netflix or any of the other video streaming services all in. For the basics, it's going to be a good performer. On the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 186 on version 1.0 of that test and 108.9 on version 2.0. That comes in right where other AMD Ryzen-based laptops we've tested with this generation of processor came in. Uh, so it's performing exactly as we expected it to perform, at least for the basics. Let's take a look now at some games. So let's kick things off here with Rocket League, and we initially set it up with the highest settings at 1080p, and there we were able to get about 30 frames per second, give or take, at those settings. Not too bad considering there is no discrete GPU in this ThinkPad. And I usually never recommended ThinkPads as gaming devices, but now we're getting to a point where I think you can have some fun with these. By the way, if you run Rocket League at the lowest settings, you will get well beyond 70 frames per second. So you can definitely get 60 frames per second here at 1080p if you tweak the settings to a good spot. So that was nice to see here. Uh, let's take a look now at The Witcher 3. Uh, this is running at 1080p, lowest settings, just shy of 30 frames per second. You'll see it dip down a little bit into the mid-20s here, but this is about what we see typically on one of these AMD-based machines. So uh, not great here, but it is much better than other ThinkPads would have done in the past, and certainly better than what you'll see out of the Intel version of this one, so not bad. Uh, GTA 5 here, 1080p, lowest settings. Again, just like the other AMD machines we've looked at recently, it's performing about where those machines perform. Generally in the 40 frames per second territory, although it'll dip into the 30s every now and then. Uh, if you go down to 720p, you can usually uh, get it up to 60 and have a pretty good experience there with GTA 5. 
Uh, we also tried out Doom, the 2016 version, running at the uh, lowest settings on the Vulkan mode, and there we're getting about 30 frames per second as well. Again, great gaming experience here on the new AMD chips. And one last one to check out here, which is Fortnite. We ran this one at 1080p at the lowest settings just to see what we would get. And as you can see, the game doesn't look all that great at this setting, but it's performing quite nicely with frame rates north of 100 frames per second most of the time. So altogether, I think you're going to find a very good gaming experience on here. It's not going to rival a gaming laptop, but we're seeing graphics performance now out of something small, thin, and light that we were not seeing just a year ago. So this is really good progress here, and this is a great example of the real performance gains that AMD has made on their mobile processors. And on the 3 d Mark CloudGate benchmark test, we got a score of 15,522. That puts this right in line with other Ryzen-based machines we have looked at recently, so no surprises there, which is good. Uh, but check out the Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5. That one's right below this one on the chart there. And that one performs pretty much the same for a lot less money, but it is bigger and heavier. And again, you're paying for something smaller, thinner, and lighter. And that's the advantage that the ThinkPad offers over some of the other ones in Lenovo's line. But if you want something inexpensive, that one's a great choice, and you'll get the same performance you just saw out of this one. One more test to check out, and that is the Time Spy test from 3D Mark. Uh, there we got a score of 942, again, very competitive with that Flex 5. And if you're curious as to how the Ryzen 7 version of this laptop will do, you can take a look at the T14S result we have there on the chart. It will do marginally better both in graphics and CPU performance. So if you were looking for the best possible performance, that would certainly be the way to go. But this one is no slouch either. Uh, we also ran the 3D Mark stress test, which measures how well the computer does under sustained load. And there we got a score of 91%. Now passing on that score is 97%. So we will probably see a little thermal throttling on this one when it's under sustained load for longer periods of time. We noticed an occasional dip here or there in the games that we were playing, nothing significant, but I think you will notice it a little bit uh, when you are running the system pretty hard. And we had the system in its performance mode, which is the maximum fan speed and everything. Uh, so again, I think you'll see a little thermal throttling on here and you'll definitely want to keep uh, the vents under the laptop and on the side of the laptop clear for the best airflow. The good news is, is that the fan noise isn't very loud at all. So I suspect they may have had a bit of a trade-off here between fan noise and thermal performance, and they went uh, with fan noise because most folks want a quieter laptop. And I can tell you most of the time, you will never hear that fan kick on unless you really start pushing it with a game or something like that. And even then, the fan noise here is pretty minimal. All right, one last thing to take a look at, and that is its Linux performance. We booted up the latest version of Ubuntu here, and it looks like everything is working. Video, audio, touch display, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth. Everything seems to have been detected successfully when we loaded everything up. And altogether, it looks like a pretty good experience here if you want to run operating systems other than Windows on your device. And we're seeing more and more Linux compatibility on the laptops we've been looking at lately, which is always a good thing. So altogether, a pretty nice laptop here from Lenovo, a ThinkPad through and through. I wish it was a little more modern in its appearance. There's a lot more room here for screen, so that would be nice to see in a future iteration. But if you are looking for a more premium AMD experience in a smaller package here, I think this one might be worth taking a look at. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Tom Albrecht, Chris Allegretta, Mike Patterson, and Bill Pomerantz. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv s.